Hey and welcome to another video. In this video we're in Dynamo. We are looking at a script actually. This script is going to select all the elements of a particular category that you determine. And you, get, you will determine that by selecting an object. So I'm going to open that. I'll go to open and select all elements of category as the Dynamo script. This is something to be aware of that I haven't covered before. Make sure this is checked if you're opening a large extensive Dynamo script or a script that you're not quite sure what it does or if it's from someone else and you haven't built it yourself. Open in manual execution mode will make sure that the script does not automatically run as soon as it opens in Dynamo. I've gone through this many times to where I've built these crazy scripts that do quite a lot and if the Revit environment is set up to in a way to for everything to run whenever you open the Dynamo script, it could crash Revit. It, it could try to run and fail and you name it. So just make sure that you have this box checked, open in manual execution mode. It will allow you to determine when you run the script. So I would always suggest that you do that unless it's a script that you built yourself. So again, I'll open it that way. And it's a basic script. It doesn't do quite a whole lot, but it does just enough. One new feature in Dynamo 2.3, if you haven't looked at that video, is that we now have an extensions panel over here to the right. And what we see is a list of the packages that were used to create this script. And that's very nice, because in this case, Clockwork for Dynamo 2.0, that, that's in the project, or that's in the script, and I happen to have that. You'll see that the two up here, Modelico and Archilab, are red and you can also see that there's a, a node here that's red and that's from the Modelico package and these are both showing up as red because I don't have those packages on my computer so the first thing I'm gonna have to do to be able to run this script is to download these packages that's not hard to do if, if you simply go to packages search for a package it will have to sync with the server just about every time you open Dynamo again but after a short second or two, you'll be able to search for these specific packages. And after you have them installed, they'll show up over here under the add-ons. And from there, you'll be able to use them in not only this package, and this package will become usable, but you'll be able to use them in any other package that you want to create yourself. So I'm going to search for my Delical right there. I'm going to download. Yes and OK. Wait for that to download, and I'm going to search for Archilab right there. Archilab. Yes, that's it. You'll see that's installed. That's just fine. I will close that, and now we can see that the select in Revit is no longer red because I have Modelical. And just to make sure that we have all of our packages, we can go to manage. And it turns out that I need to update my archi-lab and it says pending install. So I'm gonna have to close Dynamo and I'll be right back once I have that reinstalled. So I've got archi-lab reinstalled and I don't know if this is a bug with Dynamo 2.3, but I can still see that archi-lab is over here showing in red, but I clearly have it installed. I don't know why. Anyways, I see no red nodes here. I, that tells me everything is fine. So let's go over the script and what it does. So first, like we, like we said, actually, the script itself will select all the elements of a particular category based on you selecting an element. So if you want to select every single door in the entire project, or I'm sorry, in the entire view, then all you have to do is select a door and it will select all the doors regardless of type. So looking at the beginning here, all we're asked to do is select the model element. And when I, I'm going to tie this back to the player so we can run it through the player and I'm going to, through each node, I'll, I'll say whether it's an input or an output. So this select model element is an input and I have to actually specify that as an input so the user can input values. If I don't say 
is input, it will of course still be an input, but it won't appear in the player as an input and honestly the script would not work from the player. So I'm gonna take that element, get the elements category, and then from that, I'm going to get all the elements of that category. And then I'll display the number of elements selected. And that's gonna be an output. So after you go through this process and run the script, you're gonna see how many elements are selected. And then I've got a node called select in Revit, and that's a part of the Modelical package, which allows you to take this selection, which is all the elements of that particular, all the elements of a category of that element you selected, and then actually select those in Revit, because that's the whole point of this. And then at this point, I want to filter that. And I want to filter that because I'm going to prompt the user to say, hey, maybe I want to isolate all these elements in this particular view now that I've selected them all. And the default will be false. And the user has the option to change that to true to also isolate them. But you could see here, if I right click that, that's also going to be an input. This is going to be in something else that the user gets to decide that makes this a little more original. And then I'll take that output, whether it's isolated in the view or not, and I'll flatten that just because of the way the filter works. And from there, I will isolate in view. This is again from the Modelical package. I will get the current view, which is basically the, just the view you are currently clicked into, and then take all of those elements and isolate them in the view or not. If you choose false, none of this will happen. You'll just select them. So again, that's very simple. There's not a lot going on. But now let's actually try it out. So I'm going to save this and I'll pull Dynamo over here so we can still see this working. So I've got four different plans here, layouts, and I'll zoom in on one of them. And now I'll, I'll hit the player and there we can see it. Select all elements of category. Seems very simple. So I'm gonna hit run because that's what we wanna do. Uh, and of course, close Dynamo to continue. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to close Dynamo to continue. I'll close Dynamo, which I've done. I'll hit play. And it will run, it will say it's running. And because I have user inputs, it now takes me to this specific dialog window where I can now choose an element. So isolate elements in view. Do I want to isolate them in the view? Um, no, we don't want to do that right now. We don't need to. Uh, but now, now I'll select an element. And now I get prompted to select an element and that Dynamo player is waiting for the selection in Revit. So like I said, maybe we want to isolate, or not isolate, but just select all the doors in the project. So I will, well, I picked a wall. Well, let's go with a wall. I'll hit run. It will run. It will take a minute. And now you can see that every wall is selected in the whole project. And you can confirm that when you see walls over here at the top left. That's all that's selected. If I go to filter, all I see is walls. So I know that it works. And I can just click off to deselect. I can go back and rerun this. And because it was run as a wall, wall selected, I get all the walls again. Now, a way around that is just close the player, it's gonna reset, and I'll hit play again. And at this point, I'm going to click a door, or at least I'm going to try to. I'll zoom in and make sure I click the door. I'll click the door, I've got the door, it tells me the element ID right there. If you wanted to search for it, you could find it that way. And maybe I wanna isolate the doors in view this time. Now I'll hit run. And at this point, I get all the doors selected. You can see that they're all doors over here. And if I go to filter, also you can see all the doors. And they're also isolated. I've got that temporary hide isolate on, and all my doors are there. Now, most of the time, you're not gonna need to do this, but there have been plenty of instances where I've needed to select everything and maybe change a parameter for every door, or whatever it might be. But the, the power of this script is it gets around every family and every specific type. So you might be saying, oh, you just select all instances in view. Well, you can do that. You can select all instances in the view. 
and that's only by type. So if I select this door and it's clearly a double door, I can right click it, select all instances in entire project. And all I get are all the doors that are that specific type. Now that's not helpful. Right, maybe it's helpful and honestly I would use that if you could. But in a case where you need to select every door, instead of having to do something like this, which I don't, I don't necessarily like to do with gigantic models, if your model's huge and you swipe across the whole screen, it could take a whole minute for you to be able to choose filter and then only choose doors. Now again, I did that in about the same amount of time, but if your project is huge, this is a, using this script is a very quick way to start to select everything all at once. There's actually one more way of selecting all of these different elements, and that's if I go to View, Schedules, and I actually have to make a schedule. So like, let's say, uh, like doors again. I'll make doors, this is my second door schedule, and I want to just add the door type, if I can find type, there's type. And I'll make sure to go to Sort and Itemize All Instances. So I can see all the doors in the entire project. These are all the doors in the whole project. So another way of doing what we just did is you could select them all this way, which is just, it could be a pain, this is a pain, especially if you don't have this schedule made. You could select them all like this. I have to keep scrolling and scrolling because of the number of doors in this project. I finally get down there and go back to the perspective and I can see all the doors are selected. So if you don't have a schedule made, it's kind of silly to make a schedule for selecting all the types of doors that you have when in reality you could just run the script and select all the doors do what you need to do and move on it's very simple one last thing I will cover is I don't necessarily like the order in which these appear because I want to first select the model element and then decide do I want to isolate the elements in view well that's that's all based on how you build the script in Dynamo, specifically for the player. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll hit this little pencil, which is edit in Dynamo. Dynamo will then open with this script and I can start to edit it. And from there, I will actually change this order. And I'll show you how to do that. There's not a great way of doing it. And I hope at some point they update how this order is going to be shown in the player without having to like, do lots of testing because imagine you have five to ten inputs and to get them in the same order you're gonna have to do this which kind of it's too bad you can keep them as is input or as output this applies both to inputs and outputs whether it's reordering or not but it has to do with not necessarily where they are in the script because maybe you have this node over here on the left of select model element you might think oh this this would show up first in the inputs well that's not the case or you also might think that the flow of data says that the select model element should be first and that the isolate elements in view would be second that's not the case unfortunately i wish it were because it kind of makes sense but at the same time if i have a complete copy of this above or somewhere else and I have the same inputs for two different kinds of things happen at the same time, what, what would Dynamo do? Why would they know what, what order? Well, it has everything to do with when they're created, when these specific nodes are created. So when I say created, I mean added to the script itself. What I can do to get around this and change the order is I can actually if we remember that isolate elements in view was second, I could say I will cut that or I'll actually copy it with control C. I'll delete it and then I'll paste it back in. And so what did this do? All that did was it got rid of the node prior that was currently taking the first spot in the inputs. So then because I deleted that, the select model element should be the first input because this was created, this specific node select model element was created and added to the script prior to isolate elements in view. Again, it's the same node, it's just a new version, instance of the node, however you want to call it. So that's a way around it, simply copying the node, 
deleting it and pasting it back will essentially move it to the bottom of the inputs because it's the latest created. And we're going to hope at this point that that's still the case. That may or may not be the case in Dynamo 2.3, but I've saved it. I'm going to close Dynamo. I'll go back to the player. I will run this once again, and we're going to hope that the selection input is on top. And sure enough, it is. And that does confirm that it is based on the order that the nodes are created or put into the script. That's something to be aware about for sure. Again, I can select any kind of element. In this case, maybe it's this bathroom stall that ends up being a generic model. Maybe I want to isolate those in view. That's sim a simple toggle. I'll run it again, and I get all my generic models across the entire model. I sure hope you learned something in this script. Uh, if you did, please demolish that like button. It helps a lot. Also subscribe, it really helps me out. And if you like this script, I'm actually gonna put it on my website for you to download. A link to my website will be down in the description below. I will also include in the description of that download and in the description of this video, all the packages that you will need to run this script. I know Dynamo 2.3 tells you, but if you don't have Dynamo 2.3, it's still nice to know. So just so you know, all of those packages and the details for those packages will be down in the description below. So you could easily search for them in Dynamo, download them yourself, and so you'll always have them. I sure hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.